Hello everyone, I'm Didi de Sorte and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to today's seminar on plant-based diets for teenagers. Um, I'm very grateful to have been invited to do this presentation by the Wexford Library Council and by Healthy Ireland. So just to introduce myself, who am I? I'm Didi, as I mentioned already. I have a very long Dutch name, it's Dievrika de Zwarte, and I'm an Irish-based registered dietitian. So at the moment I am working part-time on the front line working in a large Dublin hospital and I also work the other half of my week for the HSE communications department. Then on the side I run a private practice clinic and a consultancy so I see people in my online clinic and I also do some menu analysis and projects such as this one. And then on a topic related to today's conversation topic and um, plant-based diets I follow a pescatarian diet and if you are interested to learn more about what that actually means I will be touching on that later in my presentation today. So then what will I be talking about in today's presentation? Well I will run us through some of the more popular plant-based diets out there. I'm going to look at the key nutrients to focus on for plant-based diets um, specifically for teenagers. I will then go through some plant-based healthy eating hacks because we do know that cooking for a plant-based teenager or for a plant-based family can be complicated at times, especially if you're not used to cooking that way. And then at the end of my session today, I will look at some foolproof plant-based meals that are healthy and nutritious and easy to cook. So let's get started. In 2018, the report on the Irish Dietary Lifestyle showed that eight of us, 8% 8 of us, and consider ourselves to be vegetarian and 2% of the Irish population consider themselves to be vegan. Now, a more recent report by Board Bia actually found that up to 20% of the Irish population are actually considering themselves interested or eager to eat more plant-based. And I have found through my practice that there's many families that come to me interested in, interested in eating more plant-based. So choosing either one meal a week to be vegetarian or even choosing to bring the whole family into a vegetarian diet. But I've definitely found this to be more common among the younger people and teenagers um, rather than the older generations in Ireland. Now there's definitely research coming out about some of the many plant-based diet health benefits. Um, but it is important to keep in mind some key nutrients um, that may be lacking um, or need to be specifically reviewed in a plant-based diet, especially for teens. So in my clinic, I regularly have parents coming to me with worries and concerns about their teen hoping to eat plant-based. Um, and often I've heard stories of conversations about plant-based eating that haven't quite gone to plan. And there is a realistic concern there of parents to make sure that their teenager is getting all the right nutrients. Um, so I would recommend anyway, if there is ever this conversation that comes up about plant-based eating, consider some of these key questions to really delve into some of the background as to why your teen is hoping to eat more plant-based. Um, for example, try and delve into the motivations for their plant-based eating. Is it based on ethics? Are they worried about the environment? Are they worried about animal welfare? Or is there some other form of motivation there, potentially health, or are they even looking at weight or body image or, you know, whatever is going on, it's helpful to understand the motivations behind their decision. It is also helpful to delve into the type of plant-based eating they're interested to commence. So are they interested in going full on vegan, which means abstaining from all animal based foods, or are they interested to try a more flexitarian approach? and where they are maybe including more plant-based meals rather than going all out vegetarian or vegan. Again, I'm going to touch on these types of diets in a few minutes. Next comes the important question, I guess, as to how involved they want to be in this new dietary lifestyle. Um, are they interested to help out now with the groceries and with the shopping and the cooking in the house? Or are they hoping that you or the rest of the family are going to help them with these um, aspects and potentially just hope for you to just facilitate their wishes. Um, it's, open, it's helpful just to open that question. Potentially this is an opportunity for them to become more involved in the cooking at home and um, to get a bit more creative, to build on their skills in the kitchen. And then it's helpful to gauge also where they are in their own knowledge on plant-based eating. Have they done some of the research themselves into what key nutrients to focus on? Do they know if there's any supplements they might need to start taking? Um, and also do they understand some of the, the implications that this may have on the family meal environment? Um, rather than judging, I suppose it's helpful always to gain an insight into their perspective as to where they are from a knowledge side of things on plant-based eating. 
Now, I've thrown a lot of jargon at you so far today. Plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, flexitarian. Um, let's just clear everything here for a minute and ask ourselves, what does plant-based even mean? Um, now, as you may have guessed already, there's a range or a whole spectrum of plant-based eating um, or plant-based dietary types. And really what I mean when it comes to plant-based is eating more plant-based foods and potentially less animal foods or foods sourced from animals. Now, some plant-based diets are definitely better known than others. We may have heard of the terms vegetarian or vegan, but have you heard of palatarian or pescatarian or even the different types of vegetarian diets out there? I know it can become a bit of a whirlwind of terminology, so let's delve right in and have a look at some of the key plant-based diets that we find in Ireland. So first, let's look at the term flexitarian. This is the type of diet where you are trying to eat more plant-based meals and less animal source foods, but there will still be some sources of animal foods in the diet. And I would say this is probably the most common plant-based diet out there, even though we don't put a label on it. Some people might say, I'm going to have, you know, a veggie day a week, or I'm going to try and have, you know, some vegetarian choices when I'm eating out rather than eating meat all the time. That would be considered flexitarian, where you're actively making a decision to eat less animal-based foods. So, as I said already, there's different options out there when it comes to flexitarian diets. Some people choose to have one whole vegetarian day a week. Other people choose to have only one meat-eating day a week. Um, some people choose to maybe always have a vegetarian, or so a non-animal-based lunch or a dinner um, every day of the week. Um, but then there's other people who, for example, choose to eat fully vegetarian at home and then go to have some plant-based foods, such as meat, perhaps when they eat out of the home. And there's lots of different options, different routines that might suit every different person and family. Next, we look at vegetarian diets. And this is potentially the most commonly kind of voiced one, the one we hear the most about. Um, and vegetarian diets tend to exclude all meat, poultry and fish products but do include dairy and eggs. Some vegetarians choose to either not eat eggs or dairy, so I'll touch on those in a minute. Um, and also be aware that some vegetarians aim to not eat any foods derived from meat as well, such as gravies or gelatine. Um, and if you're ever unsure, with, you know, if there's a vegetarian coming over for dinner, maybe consider asking them whether they do eat, for example, as I said, gravy from meat or whether they are quite strict and don't want any foods derived from um, the meat of an animal. So as I said, some vegetarian people following a vegetarian diet choose to not eat the meat, fish and poultry, but also choose to not eat eggs. Then they do eat dairy um, or any foods derived from dairy, such as your yogurt, your cheese. Um, and these this type of diet we often would refer to as lacto-vegetarian, which means they avoid eggs, but they do eat dairy. And then we have ovo-vegetarian diets, which similar to lacto-vegetarian do exclude your meat, poultry and fish, but also exclude dairy, but do have eggs. So we would consider this type of vegetarian diet an ovo-vegetarian diet. And then a lacto-ovo-vegetarian diet is really the diet that most of us refer to as just vegetarian, which is where you avoid your meat, poultry and fish, but you will include eggs and dairy. So the next time someone is coming around for dinner and you are cooking and you know that this person likes to eat a vegetarian diet, it may be worth checking with them. Do they eat dairy and eggs and how strict do they wish to be when it comes to any animal foods such as your gravies or gelatines or goose fat? Um, it's always better to ask them to be sorry. That tends to be the, the perspective as well of vegetarians. They like to be asked. They're not afraid to talk about their dietary choices. Now, next, I hope to talk a bit about Apollo and pescatarian diets. So these are slightly less well known. Now, a Apollotarian diet tends to avoid meat and fish, but is normally happy to eat poultry. And then a pescatarian diet avoids meat and poultry, but is normally including some form of seafood. Um, again, always best to ask, does your pescatarian guest eat seafood, shellfish? Um, or fish, it's always just best to ask which types of foods they hope to avoid. And lastly then, the vegan diet. Um, and this is the type of diet where people tend to avoid all animal-based products. Um, so they avoid your meat, poultry, fish, dairy, and eggs. And then also 
often avoid all those other foods that have animal products in them, such as jellies, because they contain gelatine, and then any food with gravy in it as well. And then some people take this to um, another stage where they then also avoid to wear, for example, any animal-based products. Um, they may choose to avoid wearing leather or wearing wool. So as you can see, there are a lot of different plant-based diets out there. And as I said before, it may be helpful then if your teen is considering moving into a more plant-based diet, asking them which type of diet they are considering, which most falls in line with their motivations to eat more plant-based. Um, a lot of people find that, for example, choosing to eat flexitarian, so trying out some of those vegetarian or vegan meals a week to start with is an easier transition than going full on vegan. Um, but again, it's helpful to have that conversation to see what really falls most in line um, with your teens and dietary choices and ethical choices. Now then looking at some of our key nutrients to consider for our teenagers. Um, and actually a lot of these are very similar for adults as well. Um, but for someone who is hoping to follow a flexitarian diet, that's again the diet where you do include some meat and animal-based products some days of the week or some meals of the day, often this diet is fairly similar when it comes to nutritional balance as any other non-plant-based diet. Um, it would have similar recommendations for supplements, so this would be your vitamin D recommendation and then 400 micrograms of folic acid for women of childbearing age as well. Um, obviously, if there's any kind of more restrictive eating or if someone's very fussy, it may be helpful to speak to a dietitian to see if there's any more specific nutrients that may need to be supplemented. But normally, as I said, a flexitarian diet is fairly similar when it comes to nutrition to someone who does eat some meat um, most of the time. So next are vegetarian diets. Again, the diets where we normally avoid meat, poultry and fish. We may include eggs and dairy foods. Um, again, very similar to flexitarian, often no need to supplement, no key nutrients that are of particular concern, except for some people they may benefit from a B12 supplement. Um, but this is very much down to the individual. It may be helpful, for example, to get B le B12 levels checked by a GP before starting to supplement. Um, again, always consider your vitamin D supplementation and your folic acid supplementation as for the general population. And then lastly, we have our vegan diets. And for these diets, there are a few more nutrients to consider. Again, we definitely do need to consider the B12 supplement and then as for everyone else, the vitamin D and the folic acid. And then there's some other key nutrients that we might not need to supplement, but we just want to make sure we include regular sources of them. They include things like your selenium, iodine, zinc, omega-3, and the list is on the slide there. And I will go through some of the key sources now in my next few slides. So in a vegan diet, as I mentioned, we do need to supplement B12. Um, a daily 10 microgram supplement is recommended. Um, it's hard to get the full B12 recommendations or requirements from just food alone, but we do find vitamin B12 also in things like our yeast flakes. And then a lot of our breakfast cereals, for example, are also fortified with vitamin B12. Next, we need to make sure we get regular sources of protein and good sources of protein in a vegan diet include your beans, your lentils, and then things like your soya as well. So anything made from soya would be tofu or tempeh. Um, and then all your corn products, for example, may also be good sources of protein. Grains, so whole grains are also a good source of protein and we would recommend to include whole grains mixed with, um, with beans or lentils, for example, because the pulses and the grains together make a complete protein, whereas the grains on their own maybe aren't as full a complete protein as the combination of them together. Next then, it's important to get enough of your omega-3s. And interestingly with vegan diets as well, we want to balance the amount of omega-3 to the amount of omega-6. We want more omega-3 fats and less of the omega-6 fats. So good sources of your omega-3 fats would be things like your chia seeds or your linseeds, hemp seeds, and then walnuts, as well as your rape seeds. And then we might want to limit some of the sources of omega-6. So you don't need to avoid them completely, just limit how often you have them. This would be things like your sunflower oil, your corn oil, um, and also limiting things like your pumpkins and sunflower seeds. Next, we want to ensure we get a good amount of calcium from our diet. Um, good sources of calcium would be your calcium fortified plant-based dairy alternatives. Um, be aware that the organic versions tend to not have calcium fortified, whereas the non-organics tend to have calcium fortified. And you do need to ensure that you pick a brand that has calcium fortification in it. Other good sources of plant-based um, calcium include kale or almonds or tahini paste, for example. 
As I mentioned for vitamin D, we need to follow public health guidance and this tends to recommend a vitamin D supplement. Um, the guidance is changing, so depending on when you watch this, um, we tend to recommend a vitamin D supplement for the entire population, um, but depending on how our supplementation guidelines go, it may be just for older adults. However, I would recommend for every person following a vegan diet that we may also supplement with vitamin D. Next is iodine, and we don't find iodine very large amounts in vegan diets. Um, we may find iodine in some seaweeds, for example, but the, the content of those can vary. Um, other good sources would be your um, fortified plant-based dairy alternatives, um, but some people who don't have many of those either then may need a supplement of iodine depending on their dietary intake. Next, regarding selenium, um, while the selenium content of Brazil nuts tend to vary considerably, most people meet their recommendations um, for selenium from just two Brazil nuts a day. Um, however, some people may still, on top of that, then need a supplement. However, it is important not to just standardize supplements for selenium for people who are on a vegan diet, as there is a risk of overdose. Next, iron. Um, we find iron in actually a surprisingly large amount of vegan foods. And we also know that if someone is eating less iron from animal foods, we actually can increase our absorption of iron from plant-based foods. Um, good sources of iron in plant-based foods include your lentils and your beans. And then we have things like cashew nuts as well, which are good sources. A lot of breakfast cereals are fortified with iron. And then we have, of course, our leafy greens, like our kale and spinach, which are great sources. Now we know that our absorption of these plant-based sources of iron um, is increased when we have plenty of vitamin C with that food. So consider maybe having a nice stir fry with some leafy greens and then putting some tomatoes or peppers in there for a boost of vitamin C. Or if you're having your breakfast cereal, maybe have a glass of orange juice as well to again boost that absorption of the plant-based iron foods. And so lastly, we want to keep an eye on how much zinc we eat. Um, normally, people who eat enough protein in a vegan diet tend to get enough zinc as well. But again, you would find good sources of zinc in your lentils, your beans, then most of your nuts and seeds again as well. And then things like your wholemeal bread or brown pasta and quinoa. Now, as I said, with most of these foods, it's not about eating them in isolation to try and put together an entirely balanced diet. It's really about building a diet that is varied and has lots of different um, options at different meals. So rather than eating the same thing like white bread and hummus every day, which I have seen some teenagers do um, and some adults, of course, um, it's about variety, colors, different veggies, different types of beans if you can. Um, it's really about building color and variety into a diet. Now, if you are worried whether your teenager or you yourself even is eating a balanced diet when you are following a more vegan diet, it's helpful to speak to a dietitian. They can assess the diet, see if there's any obvious missing nutrients and potentially then discuss whether additional supplements are required. So next, let's have a look at some plant-based healthy eating hacks. Um, I know firsthand that it can be tricky to change around the diet when either a family member or the entire family is switching to more plant-based eating. Um, you could be stuck in the logistics. If only one family member switches, how do you cook for two different types of diets? And as a parent, of course, you want to ensure your teen is eating the right amounts of nutrients. Um, and so doing all the research, it can lead to a bit of information overload, which is understandable, but is very frustrating and overwhelming for some. And you may find that suddenly there's increased pressure on yourself or on other family members to now change the grocery routines, change the cooking routines, have to find new recipes. And, and this pressure and this just overwhelm can lead to more negative feelings around plant-based eating. So let's have a look at some hacks that we can use to make this transition a little easier on us all. So really a big tip I have is to see if you can take it one step at a time. Consider if maybe we can move through a flexitarian diet phase first, um, where you try to choose more vegan and vegetarian options to start with and slowly move towards a more plant-based diet, depending on what your teen is actually aiming for him or herself. This can help you gain confidence with your cooking skills. It can help you understand um, all the different products that are available out there in the supermarket and you can start taste testing some of them as well as you move towards more plant-based eating. And you might actually find that maybe your meals are gradually becoming healthier as a result of this process as well. And some people have even reported that they find plant-based eating cheaper because meat and all the other options, um, animal options, were actually 
adding a significant cost to the, the grocery bills. So it may be worth even experimenting with some of these plant-based options. Now, my next hack would be to get your recipes online. There is absolutely no need to invest in expensive cookery books and um, if you feel like that's not the way you want to take it. Uh, there's lots of lovely recipes online, absolutely millions and millions of plant-based recipes these days. But of course, if you are into your books, <laughs> go for the plant-based books. There is nice cooking books out there now with more plant-based options. Now, a little disclaimer here, by the way, is that your plant-based meals do not need to look like the pictures on the recipes online or in the books. It is perfectly normal to cook a plant-based meal that doesn't look Instagram worthy or whatever they're looking for at the moment. And um, a healthy meal can be as simple as half a plate of colorful veg, a quarter plate of whole grain carbohydrates like quinoa or brown rice, and then a quarter plate of beans or lentils, um, or even one of the, the vegan um, or veggie meat alternatives. It doesn't have to look absolutely stunning on the plate. A very healthy meal can not always look perfect. So another hack I have, it would be to cook and buy in bulk. Um, bulk cooking would mean that you cook more than one meal or one night's meal in one go, um, which means you have leftovers for the next day or you might even freeze a few for another week. Um, one that I really like making myself would be to cook, bulk cook a sauce type meal. Um, I like making a base of tomato sauce with loads of beans and lentils thrown in, maybe some veggies. If I'm really lazy one day, I'll just throw in a big bag of frozen veg. And I won't flavor it with any herbs or spices at that time. Because what I can then do is I can make this big pot of sauce with beans, so loads of protein, loads of nutrition in there with all the veggies, and I can freeze them in batches. I might take one batch out of the freezer then one day and say, I'm gonna have pasta today. So I defrost it, add some basil leaves, some oregano, maybe some pepper, might even throw in a few olives and then serve it with pasta. So that's my pasta dish ready to go. But that same red tomato sauce with all the beans and veggies that I have in the freezer, the next day I could take out the next batch and say I'm gonna make a chili today, a chili sin carne, so a meatless chili con carne. Um, and so I would maybe throw in some coriander, maybe some lemon juice, um, some chili obviously, some smoked paprika, and then serve it with some whole grain rice and then voila. Also, if you buy a lot of your food in bulk, so things like your dried beans, dried lentils, um, and then maybe some big bags of whole grain rice, you could get them, for example, from a co-op or a big um, Asian market even is where I get a lot of my stuff. And this tends to be cheaper and they store really well. I think dried beans and dried lentils would get anyone through an apocalypse. So they would definitely store well in the back of your kitchen cupboard. Um, and again, you're maybe saving some money and saving yourself hassle of grocery trips to um, buy some of the more plant-based oriented, orientated foods. And lastly, I want to give you some tips on how to beat the shelf life because I know plant-based foods tend to sound like a lot of fresh veg and a lot of fresh fruit that tends to go off in the vegetable drawer too quickly and definitely before the end of your week of you know, your planned grocery shop. So for example, consider choosing some frozen fruit and frozen veg. They tend to be just as nutritious as the fresh stuff and they definitely store a lot better. Next, I also mentioned already just there, canned and dried lentils and beans. Again, these are the staple of healthy, balanced vegan diets, and they will definitely last really well in the back of the kitchen cupboard. Another one that gets forgotten quite often would be things like your dried fruit, like your apricots, your figs, your raisins, and these make a really good snack and they taste surprisingly good mixed into some savory dishes as well, like your curries, where they often use raisins. Um, and they're a great source of iron and fiber as well. And then your nuts and seeds, they tend to have a good shelf life by themselves. Just make sure you lock them up tight and keep them in a dark space and um, to keep them as fresh as possible. But again, they're really helpful to add to curries or to sauces um, or just even to sprinkle on top of them at the end of a meal. And also don't be afraid to freeze leftovers. And um, this is a really good way to preserve the, the shelf life of foods you've just cooked. It's also very handy for a rainy day when you're coming home from a late day's work and you don't really feel like cooking and um, you can just defrost it quickly enough. Now, do make sure that you label and date the foods when you put them in the freezer, because otherwise they end up getting lost in the back of the freezer, like a lot of my own food tends to do. And um, so best to label, date and freeze quickly as well. So once you've cooked a meal, cool it down quickly um, and then put it into the freezer quickly after cooking as well for a longer shelf life. So next then, as I mentioned, there's plenty of recipes out there, but we can sometimes feel a bit overwhelmed as we move into a more plant-based 
eating pattern and um, especially when it comes to ideas for meals. So I will now share some of my top meal ideas for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So for example, for breakfast, we want to make sure we do get a little bit of protein already at that time of the day. So consider the standard beans on toast. Couldn't be easier. Or otherwise try something more um, specialized, like an overnight oats. You can mix in some nuts, maybe use some soya yogurt and um, plenty of dried fruit or frozen fruit. That's what I love doing. I put frozen fruit in with some soya yogurt um, and then some oats and I let it all kind of soak overnight. And then you've got a delicious cold porridge type in the morning time. Um, and then otherwise just go for your plain old breakfast cereal again your fortified option like a shreddies or maybe your bran flakes and serve it with some um, calcium fortified milk alternative and some nuts maybe some fruit again on top so then lunch ideas consider maybe making a lentil and butternut squash soup which you can then serve with a nice whole grain sandwich or if you're finding you might like something lighter for your lunch, you could choose maybe whole grain crackers, serve it with some peanut butter, and then some sliced fruit. So maybe some banana or apple, depending. Um, but that nice combination of the peanut butter and the fruit is actually a big hit. Or otherwise, consider going for something like a falafel wrap. So you could buy falafel ready-made in a lot of supermarkets these days. So pop them into a wrap, maybe a bit of hummus or tahini, um, or even a bit of vegan mayo or vegan coleslaw. You've got a really nice, nutritious wrap ready to go. And then for dinner options, we could, for example, make a nice stir fry. Again, no need to chop up all the veg, buy your ready to go kit um, with all the different veggies and then add some tofu or, and maybe even some nuts. So throw in some cashews or Brazil nuts in there, maybe sprinkle on some sesame seeds and you've got a lovely, delicious meal. Or maybe for something more hearty, consider something like a bean and vegetable stew and maybe add some nice roast potatoes with that and you've got a nice, delicious hot dinner. For something a little bit more uh, Italian, for example, you could choose TVP, which is textured vegetable protein, which is like a, a mince, but then made from soya. And you can make a lovely bolognese sauce with that. Add some sun-dried tomatoes and maybe sprinkle on some vegan cheese if you have some in the supermarket and serve it with whole grain pasta. So just to summarize today's seminar then, um, we know that plant-based diets are on the rise and there's various types of plant-based options or dietary options available. So we know then that flexitarian and vegetarian diets often don't need to supplement with other supplements um, other than the folic acid and vitamin D. Um, but we do know vegan diets have some more specific nutrient needs. We do need to supplement with B12 and we need to make sure we include key nutrient sources that we discussed earlier in our session today. Now, I'm under no pretense that plant-based cooking is easy and it can take a little while to get used to. So my top hacks really for that would be to take it one step at a time, to get your recipes online if you can, to cook in bulk and buy in bulk and to beat that shelf life by using some of the hacks we discussed in our presentation earlier. And I then shared some of my top ideas for meals for our breakfast, lunch and dinner. And as I said already earlier in our seminar today, is variety is really key. So rather than sticking to the same breakfast, lunch and dinner, I would recommend to vary it up as if you can. Different options for veggies, different options for your grains um, and different options for your protein sources as well. So thank you so much for watching today's seminar. I really hope you have found it helpful. Um, I hope you found some inspiration. You hope, I hope you had your questions answered that may have been going around your mind for some time. Um, of course, if you have any more questions, you can let me know. You can get in touch with me via Instagram. Um, my address is there below. It's dbtitian underscore rd. Or you can otherwise fill out a contact form on my website as well, which is www.ddtitian.com. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for your time. And I hope to see you again in the future. Thanks. Bye.